Students experiment with algae's viability as a biofuel. As the ongoing war in Ukraine and energy crisis continues, people are searching for a solution. More solar panels and windmills have been suggested but are not an answer to the fuel that currently powers our transportation and trade. One suggestion from the past could be an answer, algal biofuel. Producing biofuel from algae is a good replacement to using food crops, like corn and soy, which have been the traditional sources of biofuel. Algae has been researched in the past and some may even remember, the great algal biofuel bubble that burst back in 2010, 2012. The reason for this burst was the cost of fuel dropped and the cost of producing biofuel was not economically viable. Today that is not the case and this could be an opportunity for algal fuel to take center stage. To see where biofuel from algae is today, let us review an article from the Newton Daily News by Christopher Braunschweig, from this past May 25, 2022. While everyone else was busy finishing their end-of-semester tests at Newton High School, senior Callie Van Clay spent her last day making biofuel. Dressed in a white lab coat and donning thick, plastic goggles, Van Clay dashed out of the science room to find her teacher, Jody Morgan Peters. They're separating, come look, Callie exclaimed from across the courtyard to her teacher. Morgan Peters hurried over to find a separating funnel filled with green-yellow fluid and small chunks of algae. Floating atop the thickest layer of algae was a pale yellow liquid, which Van Clay, 17, proudly stated was the biofuel. After multiple filtrations, the senior was able to reserve a few ounces. Perhaps that is not enough to fill a tank, but it was the proper bookend to a project Van Clay and fellow senior Trayson Garden, 18 had started. As part of their fledge course, Van Clay and Garden were encouraged to identify a world problem and develop a project or experiment to help solve the issue. Fledge is a STEM innovator class led by Morgan Peters. The Project Focus course is powered by a partnership with the University of Iowa and is designed to instill STEM and business principles. Both seniors decided they wanted to take a closer look at the viability of algae as a biofuel. By partnering with local businesses and other agencies in their own community, Van Clay and Garden were able to get their hands on algae for testing. With energy-based companies like Renewable Energy Group, TPI Composites, and Arcosa Wind Towers already set up in Newton, Iowa, the two figured they would also have the necessary community resources to develop their project. They also partnered with the city's wastewater treatment plant to obtain algae samples. Garden said the factors that cause the growth rate of algae include the type of species it is, temperature, light intensity, the color of the light, whether or not it is agitated while it is growing, the amount of nutrients inside the solution it is grown in, and the pH levels of that solution. So how do algae become biofuel? Garden explained the algae has to be grown and cultivated. Afterwards, oil must be extracted from the algae, which can be further refined and turned into biodiesel. Their research showed production of algae is a carbon-neutral process, and does not take up human food sources. In other related algal biofuel news, scientists in Arizona have been cultivating algae for several years, but this time, ASU researchers are working on a project with the city of Mesa, in hopes of turning wastewater byproducts into fuel. They want to harness the way algae naturally works, to coax another use out of the gases that would otherwise be emitted as a result of the necessary process of breaking down human-produced wastewater. Algae projects are most sustainable when combined with other processes, like wastewater treatment, something big companies and investors aren't always aligned with. And beyond biology or technology, there are problems of infrastructure and policy. For algae to work, leaders and companies need to care about it. Another decision for researchers growing algae, including Arizona teams, is whether to grow algae in environments that are open or close to the outside world. To grow the vast amounts of algae needed to produce biofuels on a large scale, cultivators need big ponds. Smaller, closed systems tend to work well, but the size is limited and they're more expensive. When ponds are outside, wind could contaminate the algae or introduce dust. Let's hope these scientists will be able to progress the promise of algal biofuel that could solve our current global fuel and climate crisis. In final, while many students are planning their end-of-semester parties, a few heroic students are planning how to save our Mother Earth.